What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of My Hero Academia and this one was... We're probably gonna see two more episodes after this of the provisional exams for the license or the provisional license exams. So this episode was kind of like catching up with a few characters, passing a few characters, and kind of leading up to probably a really really big fight for a couple different characters next episode and probably the next uh, the episode after that as well but uh so this episode we picked up where we left off from the first step or from the last episode where Todoroki was facing off against uh, a knockoff Naruto ninja clan that looked like Baymax's you know face on their little things and uh so he pretty much took care of them very cleverly because he figured that if they if the commission decided to make as much of a realistic environment as possible then they also probably put fuel in one of the tanks so he busted a hole in the tank lit it on fire and blew it up and took everybody out and pretty much i think after he froze everybody just kind of walked up and do 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 and just you know tagged them uh with the uh with the balls so he passed fairly handily and i feel like the one dude with the wind powers whose name i forget who's super optimistic has a bit of a beef with him uh, i'm not sure why but uh we saw that he was all excited and talking with somebody about oh i love this hero too and then he glanced over at todoroki gave him this just like death glare and then went right back to the conversation so don't really know what that is or what that will be. I'm curious to see because they're probably going to do some one-on-one -on -one fighting at some point. Um, oh yeah, there's more provisional license exams to be had. So this is probably step one. So I'm guessing probably step one next two episodes and then the rest of whatever the test is for the remainder of the season. So uh, I don't know why I didn't piece that together. I kept I kept thinking that like that was this was the test, but there's more layers. Yeah, <sighs> there's more layers to it. Uh, well, whatever. So anyway, <laughs> we we uh, we go from there. We catch up with Momo and her group, who are in a building, and we meet this group of very like preppy, like almost yeah, unbearably so preppy characters. Who uh, one of them has the ability when she drinks tea to, and I, I'm curious how this quirk was discovered. Uh, it's kind of interesting to think how is this quirk discovered when she drinks tea and then closes her eyes, she becomes a super genius and is able to calculate everything at once. Uh, so she calculated the perfect plan for success to take out uh, the group from the UA. And so they were, I guess, expecting, like their whole, her whole plan was to make each of them kind of use or disable their quirks. Um, with Jiro, uh, they hurt her one ear so she couldn't use uh, her quirk to its fullest ability. Um, they made it really, really cold so that, they made it really, really cold so that, uh, Tsu went to sleep or started hibernating. I forget the big guy's name, um, but they blocked the window so he couldn't kind of see what was coming. And, uh, the last factor was getting Momo to use her quirk so that she would use all the lipids in her body or limit, limited amount of lipids in her body to make something and then was unable to do anything else essentially trying to make something in defense of what they were doing. Instead, she used her quirk in the attack and actually made a giant amplifier for Jiro to plug her headphones in to just knock everybody out with a high frequency, except for the one super genius girl. So her quirk kind of failed because she was basing all of her calculations off of the way that her class would go about it, which is one person at a time, everybody for themselves when shit hits the fan kind of deal. But instead we ended up seeing that they stuck together so when uh when momo was dragged back into the room and was about to be taken out momo handcuffed made a hand made a set of handcuffs to hold the hold this girl's arm so she switched to the other hand and was about to tag her and then sue they busted through the door and sue grabbed her wrist with her tongue and yeah she was fairly handily defeated and that whole group passed so we have more passing uh, which is awesome. Then we meet some dude whose ability is clay. I don't know exactly what that means, but essentially everybody who, like, it was this really weird, uh, where we see this mush of things with a ball hitting it. I'm not quite sure what it was at first. Then we see Bakugo Kirishima and, um, that the, oh God, I forget his name again. There's so many characters to keep track of in this show. They meet up with this guy, and Kirishima 
is turned into a blob of clay, kind of nasty blob of clay. And um, so that obviously pisses off uh, Bakugo. And I'm pretty sure Bakugo's already figured out a strategy to defeat this guy. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll see. Um, so that's going to be a fight for next episode. And another thing for next episode is um, uh, Sero, Uraraka, and Midoriya are all uh, in a group. And Deku came up with a plan where essentially he's going to act as a decoy, dodging and trying to you know keep from getting hit by any of those balls. And uh, Sero and Uraraka are going to restrain people because his quirks don't really work, or his quirk doesn't work well for restraining. But with um, with Uraraka and Sero, theirs are obviously much more tailored towards restraint and incapacitation. Um, so that's kind of their plan, and they're going to restrain enough people that all three of them can pass since they're staying in a group, because most people are essentially trying to pass as quickly as possible, and they're not working as a team. Whereas all of Class 1A is working as a team, and this worked towards a much bigger theme, which was the fact that both Deku and Bakugo, whether intentional or not, are inspiring the class much, much more than they think to work as a team and stick together as opposed to just lead and direct and if anything happens, everybody for themselves, which does not work out well in the long run. So it was very cool to see that element carry over for these characters because they're actually able to, you know, work with each other better than the rest of the classes, which really shows the difference between Class 1A and all the other classes. And we even see Eraserhead even going like, I'm not worried, I'm just excited to see what will happen with my class. That is Class 1A. Because they they are different than any other class because they are working as a team thanks to the inspiration from Deku and his enthusiasm and essentially Bakugo's method of, you know, keep up or get left behind, bitches. Like, that, that's kind of the difference between the two of these, uh, the, those two's, you know, inspirational style or, or encouragement style and the difference between that class and other classes. So, yeah, it should be pretty awesome, and I'm really excited to see where it's going to go from here with those characters. But if you guys want to see the full reaction to this video, head on down to the link in the description. Once you watch it, come on back, leave a comment letting me know what you guys think. Make sure to subscribe for some reviews and uh, the remainder of this season uh, in reactions, and that'll be, that'll be it. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to be there, and have a good one.